Okay, so welcome to the last topic of electricity. Now, there is no maths involved in this topic. So, of course, my least favorite. Uh, however, if there's a, little, a bit of a theory, I'll try and go through it as quick as I can, make it as easy as possible. Short enough, so there's only um, one video of this, part one, really. Uh, yeah, so it's not, it's not overly difficult. I'll try and keep it simple, point out the key things to know uh, that come up often in exams, okay? So, first things first. The definition of a semiconductor, there are two. I prefer the second. A semiconductor is a material whose resistivity, make sure you say resistivity, not resistance, is between that of a good conductor and a good insulator. Okay? So resistivity, uh, the material whose resisti resistivity is between that of a good conductor and a good insulator. Okay? Now, uh, so, we, uh, don't worry too much about this. Okay? So basically what's happening here is that with silicon, it's an insulator. And the reason it's an insulator is because all the electrons are paired up. Okay, so if you remember junior search science, okay, it's going to be very hard to get those pairs to break. Okay, because they now all have the perfect eight electrons in their outer shell. Okay, so how you conduct it is you create, if you give it enough energy, okay, by heat energy at room temperature, some of the electrons get energy and they, of course, jump, they break the bonds. Now it turns into a conductor because now electrons, because electrons are moving, that creates, all right, electrons are, of course, negative. So when an electron leaves, they leave behind them a positive hole, so which other electrons are going to jump into, okay, which, of course, leaves a positive hole, which other electrons jump into, which, and then, of course, this leaves in the positive hole, which this jumps in, so forth, okay. So it's this insulator. But, uh, but at room temperature, the electrons get energy and they start to move, okay? And that's you get the idea of the positive hole, okay? The positive hole is basically that the electrons, when they jump, they leave behind an area. That area now appears positive, okay? So other electrons are now going to get pulled towards that, okay? And that's how the electricity then flows, okay? So intrinsic conduction, what is it? It is the movement of charges through a pure semiconductor. Okay, what is a thermistor? It is an electrical component whose resistance decreases rapidly with increasing temperature. So a thermistor, you increase the temperature, it can resist things, but as the temperature goes up, the resistance goes down. So can you think of why we'd have something like that? Yeah, fire alarms. Fire safety, fire alarms, if something gets too hot. Um, it's usually how a thermostat, that's where the word comes from, works, is that you set it at 19 degrees, so what happens is that it's resisting um, and then the temperature keeps going up. Once the temperature reaches a certain time, its resistance decreases at 19 degrees and that shuts off the circuit. Okay? Flows the electricity through a second circuit. I don't know. Now, that's a, a very oversimplified version of events, but that's basically the, uh, the general idea. Okay? So, a thermistor, it's a component, its resistance decreases with increasing temperature. Okay? LDR. And LDR, again, this is a junior circuit, guys, uh, light, resist, light dependent resistor. Okay? Uh, again, it's the idea is that. Uh, burg lamps, light sensor, they use them in street lights to, for the street lights to turn on. Okay, so you have two circuits, and at night, uh, when the light decreases, this resistance goes, uh, changes, and as a result, um, the second circuit runs, turning on the light. Okay, doping. So, unlike uh, Lance Armstrong, okay, the so doping is the addition of small, oops, uh, is the addition of small amounts of atoms or other elements to a pure semiconductor to increase conductivity, okay? So if you're asked what is doping, the addition of small elements, uh, small, sorry, small atoms of another element, so you have to say small atoms of another element, to a pure semiconductor, and this increases conductivity, all right? So there are two types, N-type and P-type. The N-type, it's called N, can you think why? Because negative. So n-types are usually negative. Okay, n-type is negative, all right? So they're negative, why? Because we now have an extra electron. So there are extra electrons there. So therefore, if you have more electrons, you're negative, okay? So that negative electron is free, okay? So it's, of course, going to want to move, okay? So because there's an elect extra electron, that's gonna mess things up. We've doped this, so now a current can flow because that electron is there. All right, so the electrons are going to be the charge carriers. So if N stands for negative, what would P stand for? P would stand for positive. So my, my pen is not actually working very well today, all right? So if P 
Previously, to create a negative, we'd fire in an extra electron. How would we create a positive? We can't fire in an extra proton. That's impossible. Okay. Instead, what we do is we add in an extra hole. Okay. In other words, we add in something with only three electrons in its outer shell. Okay. So the previous one, uh, silicon, has four electrons in its outer shell. So it wants four. So we make it merge with phosphorus, which has five, leaving an extra electron, causing charge to flow. With this, we picked here boron. All right, which has one less electron in its outer shell, causing a positive hole. And now, any electrons that come in are going to go to that and travel on to other positive holes. Okay? Now, it doesn't have to be boron. You could pick anything that has in group 3 elements in group 3. And the same up here. It doesn't have to be phosphorus. It could be any element in the group 5. Okay? Of the periodic table. All right. So, because of this, silicon now conducts. Okay? So, extrinsic is the movement of charges through a doped conductor. Okay, so you dope it, it becomes an extrinsic conduction. All right, oops, why does that go like that? Let me see now. So, PN junctions. So PN junction is the region where connecting a P-type and an N-type conductor. Okay, so it looks something like this. All right, very similar to a, um, a diode, okay? So it looks very similar to a diode, right? So, oh, well, actually it is a diode. Um, so the depletion region, how does it work? So there's a lot here, I'll try and explain it as best I can. So some free electrons in the N-type diffuse over to the P-type, okay? So the electrons that are free over here on the N they're in an area that's all full, and they see an area full of pluses, so they go, right? So they want to get over there and fill in the positive hole. They're attracted to them, okay? So what happens? The region is depleted of two of its charge carriers, okay? So similarly, the P-type, some of the holes diffuse over to the N-type, where they too combine with nearby electrons, okay? So they don't really move over, but it looks like they're diffusing over, okay? But basically what's happening is, as the electrons jump over here, they leave behind a positive hole. So the positive holes get full here, but they emerge behind, okay? The end result is that a depletion region is formed, okay? Where there are no free charge carriers, okay? So this area in between them becomes an insulator. Okay? It acts as an insulator, so it's impossible for charge now to go. So when you put an N-type and a P-type together, you create a resistor, okay? an insulator. All right? Now, we can overcome the insulator, as we're going to look at it now. Okay? Uh, junction voltage, don't worry too much about that. So current flowing. All right? So we have forward and reverse biased diodes, or PN junctions. Okay? So with a diode, if we have it forward biased, okay, we put the positive to the positive type, the negative terminal to the negative type. And what happens is that positive rejects and repels positive. So the positive holes here want to get away, okay? And negative repels negative. So the negative electrons here want to get away, okay? So what you quintessentially do is you're forcing the negatives across into the positives and you're forcing the positives across into the negatives. And eventually, you fill it all up, and then current just flows. Okay, so that's why they call it forward biased. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, we're a positive terminal connected to the P, a negative terminal connected to the N. Okay. Negative electrons are repelled by negative terminal. Positive holes are repelled by positive terminal. Okay. The depletion region eventually gets reduced. Okay, so eventually we get to a point where the depletion region is gone and the current starts to flow yet again. Okay, so what you say is forward biased, forward biased conducts current. Okay, the reason being it overcomes the depletion region, allowing it to flow. Okay, reverse biased. So reverse biased, again, this is all done in the experiment, it's kind of just to help. We connect negative to the positive terminal, or to the P-type, positive terminal, to the N-type. Now what happens? Well, negative is attracted to positive, positive is attracted to negative. So as a result, the positive holes get pulled to the side, and now as a result, the ele negative electrons get pulled to the side. And we 
increase the depletion region. So this increases, meaning current cannot flow. Okay? Again, why? The electrons in the N attract to the positive terminal. The positive holes in the P attract to the negative terminal. Depletion increased. So if you put a bulb in here, the bulb will not flow. It doesn't matter how much you increase the current by, it will not glow. Okay? And that's it. You keep increasing the PN junction or the depletion region. So that's why reverse bias diodes, PN junctions won't grow, won't, the electricity won't flow. So what you'll get is something like this. Okay? So for reverse biased, nothing will happen. For forward biased, it will, of course, continue to a certain point and then shoot up. Okay? So it'll get to a certain point and then shoot up and increase. Okay? You get to a certain point and we're done. Okay? Now, um, there's something that I wanted to mention. Oh, I think I passed it. I'm going to scroll back up here. I think I skimmed past it without uh, properly acknowledging it. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Here we go. All right. Uh, what is the junction voltage? Oh, no. Sorry. You don't need to know that. I don't really know. Yeah. Apologies. All right. So, you don't need to know that. I'm confusing myself there. Now I'm getting confused with a different topic altogether. All right, so what you need to do though in the exam is they will ask you at what point does the depletion region disappear? So generally, if you go up here, you are incorrect, you're too far gone, okay? You want to target an area closer down to where the curve, so usually give you a range around there where the curve starts to sharpen up, okay? If you get a point too far up, you're wrong, all right? So always try and pick it. Usually it is around, so here we say it's D, okay? But you, you'd be given a discretion, okay? All right, because it's very hard, unless you do the experiment yourself. It's very hard to judge, okay, from a graph. Okay, uh, what is a rectifier? Well, a rectifier, it is converts AC to DC, okay? The reason we need that is because AC is in your uh, wiring coming into the house, but most electronic devices work on the DC, okay? So therefore, you need, if you put AC into a DC circuit, you're going to just break the circuit, so you need to convert it, okay? Now, a diode has the advantage that it only allows current to flow in one direction only, okay? So we can use this to our advantage to help convert our AC to our DC, okay? So if you put a diode, all right? So here, for example, uh, let me see. Uh, where's my, there it is. Um, so let's imagine this is a DC, okay? Because it's a battery, all right? So the diode is connected, so that's the positive, that's the negative. So the long terminal is always the positive, and the small terminal is always the negative, all right? So our current is flowing this way. The diode is the correct direction, so the current will flow through the diode, the bulb will light, okay? But let's say we imagine it was the other way around. Let's say we, we turn the battery around and made this negative and that positive. The current flows this way, it hits the diode, it stops. The diode will not let anything flow in the wrong direction. It can only flow in one direction only, okay? So when a diode is reverse biased, it does not let it flow, okay? So this is kind of what you, you get. All right, so where are we? So thus the current from an AC source flows through the diode in one direction only. It is being converted to DC. So you get something like this, okay? So AC, it's going in and then it changes direction up and down. But with the diode, it stops it from going back out each time. Okay, now what you can do is you can use other things, um, capacitors to help spread that out. So what you can do when you, you, when you convert with a rectifier is you often get a graph looking something like this, where um, the AC goes in, the AC changes, so the diode stops it, but the rectifier catches it up, catches it up, okay? Or not the rectifier, the capacitor, okay? It helps distribute it. So you get something like this, okay? That's usually what your graph looks like from a rectifier. All right. LEDs, light emitting diodes, basically they're diodes that emit light. LEDs were a revolution when they came up because they used a lot less electricity and produced a lot of light. However, they've recently been found out to mess with our eyes. So the blue light in LEDs is actually uh, very bad um, for long-term exposure at nighttime. That's it. That is your semiconductors. I hope I was able to explain it somewhat easier to you. Um, again, if you have any questions, leave it in the comment section below or you can leave a question on the